You are wrong, fucked and overrated I think I'm gonna be sick and it's your fault This is the end of everything My name's Matt, welcome back to the shop And today I want to talk about um, Injection Injection timing Now over the years I've had a lot of people say I've overheard people say it and all the rest of it That uh, what happens is is that you have a port like this just say it's like this and then your valve uh, opens and your injector sprays fuel in as fuel and air is rushing in to fill the void of your cylinder this is bollocks this is not what happens I don't know where people have got this from maybe it's just because they think it's the way it should happen um, that is not what happens and that's not what happens at all and what I've got here is a timing chart let me if it lets me see it um, this is an injection and a spark uh, from a TL1000 um, they generally don't show you this kind of information in the manuals anymore from more modern ones um, but I'll put it on the bottom of the screen here somewhere so you can see it and it shows you uh, camshaft positioning sensors front cylinder rear cylinder and the strokes that it's going through ignition timing um, injector front and injector rear and exactly how it happens so you'll notice at the beginning that there's two black marks for the injector firing this is when the engine first sets off so it just sprays um, fuel as soon as it gets a camshaft positioning sensor signal so as soon as it gets a, a blip from the um, camshaft positioning sensor it basically injects that's just to get the bike fucking going because the starter motor is kicking in and then what it does is if you actually notice if we look at the front cylinder um, it basically you'll see it has a box there and a box there for the strokes and it'll say where are we front cylinder it'll say um, that's the power it says expansion but that's the power stroke and then that's the exhaust stroke um, oh, fucking hell. and it says it has a firing event there for the injector injector or fucking hell I can't write properly so it has a firing event you can see that good it has a firing event right there right between the two so why the hell does it fire the injector there it doesn't fire it any other time it waits again and it does exactly the same firing between the power stroke and the exhaust stroke what the hell is going on so because some people will be like I didn't even know it did this the reason why is twofold number one is that Injectors spray out liquid fuel. Yes, they spray in microfine droplets, but they are still droplets. They are still liquid balls of fuel. And as we should all know by now, petrol as a liquid does not burn. Simply because is if you have a, a ball of petrol, gasoline, whatever, this is all, you know, carbohydrate, uh, hydrocarbons. The oxygen the oxygen is floating around in the air around it so what you need to do is you need to get this fuel to evaporate and the way you do that is you basically try and reduce the size of the you know the globules the uh, droplets you try and decrease the size of that because then it has a larger surface area to volume so um, if you have a small ball like this and a big ball like this that shit loads of volume that shit loads so put shit loads of volume can you see that yeah you can um, to surface area surface area is a lot smaller and things evaporate from their surfaces you know they evaporate on the outside layers until they keep on going to the center and a smaller ball has a larger surface area to volume ratio. Its volume is quite small, its surface area in comparison is quite big. So you want your droplets to be as tiny as possible. So we pressurize it and we squeeze it through a hole and then when it launches out, because it's under pressure and because what you're firing it into is lower pressure, it will expand, which means that it breaks up into smaller and smaller and smaller balls until eventually it all evaporates. So this takes time weirdly enough like everything and if you're going at 10,000 rpm this still takes time and the smaller the balls the quicker they evaporate into the airstream the second reason why we need to fire it here 
because we need this entire exhaust stroke time for it to evaporate until the air goes through and picks it all up. The second reason why we do it is because we spray the back of the valve. Injectors will literally point at the back of the valve and they'll spray the back of the valve. This helps two reasons. One, you are on the power stroke about to do the exhaust stroke. So two things are going to happen here. You've just done the power stroke, so the cylinder is as hot as it's ever going to be because you're on the power stroke and your inlet valve your inlet valve actual face here is part of the combustion chamber so this is going to basically the pressure is acting directly against this is also transferring heat to this valve so if you can spray the back of the valve with fuel two things happen one that fuel evaporates and when it evaporates it goes from being a lower energy state so it's liquid and if you want it to literally fly up and evaporate upwards you want it to evaporate away from the surface it takes energy to move it and it gets that energy from the heat of the valve so when it evaporates it's just like blowing you know it's just like putting deodorant on your skin and then it evaporates and your hand goes cool or acetone or something like that when the fuel goes onto the back of the valve it evaporates taking the heat with the valve with it so it means it's cooling your inlet valve which is what we want because if your inlet valve gets too big it'll start to swell in the guide and it won't seat properly and so forth and all the rest of it so we want our um, inlet valve to cool it's part of the cool side not only that is your airflow is going to start flowing past it and pick up heat from it so we want your exhaust valve to cool that's awesome the other thing is as well is when this fuel absorbs this energy and then evaporates it's evaporating you know if you want something to evaporate quicker you know like getting a squidgy bottle you spray it on something hot it evaporates and turns to steam really quickly if it's just water so you want things to evaporate so that helps and aids with evaporation that's why we spray all our fuel on the back of the valve because it helps it evaporate because that's what we want we've done this tiny droplets and now we're basically chucking fuel on something hot so then it cools it and then it evaporates into the stream this is why we fire our injector um, the other thing is as well is injectors don't dump their fuel all at once there'll be a pulse width which is this width here and that's just the duration of how long that it, that valve um, injector is open for and this takes time you know we don't want it on the inlet stroke because otherwise we're going we're running out of time and all the rest of it so we want to basically have a cloud of vapor at the um, throat of the of the uh, port like this so you've also there's a cloud here there's a mist of fuel uh, vapor and then when the air comes in it's going to basically push its way through and take it with it and hopefully that gives us a nice mix it also means that the fuel goes into the cylinder and then starts evaporating up into the cylinder because the pistons on its way down it's trying to give it the best kind of mixing that we possibly can um, so there's quite a few reasons why you'd want to inject um, here exactly here you don't want to wait it'll be too late and you'd get shit combustion and then you know they find this out when they first started messing with injectors that if you spray on the inlet um then you're gonna have shit lumpy combustion and all this and you're not going to get a good mixture and all the rest of it and you're basically going to run lean because a lot of your fuel is still liquid this is the problem i have with jason's video where he basically sprays with a, a fucking bug sprayer kind of thing into a cylinder washing oil off number one is that's way too much fucking fuel is spraying in there it's nothing like that whatsoever that's way too much number two is that like i said the injectors don't spray into the cylinder like that yes don't get me wrong um as some of this vapor uh gets picked up by the end goes into the cylinder and it dives into the cylinder wall it will condense just like breathing on a mirror kind of thing um and some fuel will condense but not that much and hopefully when the because the cylinder is quite hot i know he's on about cold running and all the rest of it but generally when your engine's running running the cylinder's quite hot and when the fuel hits the side of the cylinder wall it evaporates again into the stream and all the rest of it this is the problem when you go fast when you go high high rpm let's just say 15,000 rpm when you're going 15 15k um the fuel goes in hits the wall and then we're already at top dead center and fucking igniting before it has time to evaporate this is why your torque curve will start to bottom out it'll start to fall off and then your horsepower will start to follow fall off eventually you know this is why we have these problems because we are running out of time and because your cylinder um 
you know and the thing is your injector can creep back further and further and further that's another way you can do it when you start going to higher rpm you look at injection mapping and all this you'll see your inject your injectors will fire a bit earlier and a bit earlier and a bit earlier to give it more time to vaporize you know so it's this is why these engine things are so complicated because there's so many things going on at once we spray the back of the valves not just so it can vaporize but also can cool the valve good mixing and so on and so on and it just goes on and on and on and on but we are going to try and cover most of it and uh i'm going to try and show you examples of um how well these things work you know we can uh, record the temperature of when you spray the back of a valve we'll heat up a valve and spray it with some acetone and watch the temperature drop because of due to evaporation we can do stuff like just um visual keys so you can see that these things are happening Hope that makes sense, and I'll see you in a bit.